Welcome to Comics TV, we're your weekly guide to the comic book world. I'm Steve Prisbella. And I'm Mike Rizzo. Each and every week we bring you the greatest in comic book news, reviews, information, interviews, everything to do with the comic book world. Today we've got some great stuff for you, including our regular features like... And we've got our mainstream reviews, our independent reviews, 30 second mini book review, dual review, and comics news. So let's kick it off with the mainstream reviews. That's me. For my first mainstream review this week, I'm going with The Deadly Duo, number three from Image. Eric Larson is the writer, Andy Smith is the artist, and Randy Elliott is the anchor. A new superhero team with a leader called Kill Cat tried to break up a female Atlantis prostitute ring led by Mankiller, a hot looking pink female shark that looks like a human. The story in this one was good, the artwork was good, the color was excellent, a lot of really vivid colors. The plot was good. Compared to, this is a basic image title. The artwork looks similar to all the other image books. The color is really graphic like most image books. Action level in this one was good. My overall grade was good. And on the price index, the book was $2.50, which averages out to 10 cents a page because you get 25 pages of nothing but action. But pick this one up if you can. For my second book, Rue, number two from Image again. Sergio Argonne is the writer and the artist, and Tom Luth is the inker. Story in this one. Gru and Raferatu, or Refertu, Referno, that's it, his dog, take on Arba and Dakorba, whatever, witches in a witch war, and total mayhem breaks out. All these witches start turning each other into Gru and Raferatu, Referno, his dog. <laughs> they start turning everybody into the dog. Uh, his dog is turned into Gru, Gru is turned into his dog, then they're turned into parrots, elephants. It's really, really funny. The story in this one was totally funny. The art was excellent, as in most of Sergio Argonne's uh, artwork. The color in this one was excellent. The plot in this one was fast and very funny. Each page led you in like a typical Gru story. Uh, creator was good. The action level was good. My overall grade for this one was very good. Definitely pick it up. Sells for $1.95 and has 29 pages, which averages out on the price guide to seven cents a page, which is a very good price for a comic book. And for my next book, X-Men Alpha, number one from Marvel. Scott Lobdell is the writer, Roger Cruz is the artist, and Tim Townsend is the anchor. The X-Men are divided between Magneto and Apocalypse for an ultimate battle between good and evil. Now, as, a, as everybody knows, Professor Xavier is dead. Well, Bishop is accusing Xavier of killing, or accusing Magneto of killing Xavier, and he's coming back with a full wrath. But all the X-Men are drawn differently. It is so cool what they all look like. They're like, in the future, Wolverine lost an arm, Sabretooth is huge. Huge, more vicious. Wild Child is more vicious. Magneto and uh, Rogue have a child together. Apocalypse took over. Cyclops, Beast, uh, Nightcrawler. It is totally amazing, this book, what they did with this. The story in this one was excellent. The artwork was excellent. It was fabulous. The color in this one was excellent. This book was good right from beginning to end. It had a fast pace to it. Action level was excellent. My overall grade was excellent and better than the regular X-Men used to be. Cost is $3.95, but get this, 47 pages of action, not one ad all the way to the end. That comes out to eight cents a page on the price guide. Plus it has a chromium cover. This book was definitely worth it. 
pick it up. This is an ultimate book to start out your collection with. Pick it up. And that's it for my mainstream review this week. Topping in this week's comics news. This is a big one, kiddies. Kathy Christian, the popular Vampirilla model, and her fiance, Image Comics publisher Tony Libido, have announced the creation of their own character, Evangeline, in a new venture with Rob Liefeld's Maximum Press. Christian states, quote, I've been Vampirilla for several years now and have enjoyed every minute of it, unquote. Libido adds, quote, we came up with the basic concept and took it to Rob Liefeld. He was incredibly enthusiastic about the idea and helped us visualize the character, unquote. Evangeline will be the fourth comic released in the Maximum Press lineup. Others include War Child, Black Flag, Cybrid, and Battlestar Galactica. Evangeline the comic will come out as a two miniseries a year and one special. Evangeline the model and the comic will be touring the comic convention circuit this spring and summer. What a gay country we have. Let goofy women create comics and get rich off their bodies. How oh, I love this country. In news briefs this week, according to reports in Comics Buyer's Guide, Jim Shooter, the former head of Defiant Comics, has landed a new job with another new comic book publisher. Broadway Comics is a company based in New York City and is owned by Broadway Video, the largest New York-based motion picture and television production and distribution company. Shooter had talked with Broadway Video about helping Defiant before they collapsed, but they weren't interested. Now they will be creating a whole new line of comics and characters. The new line will debut in August 1995. Another new company has broken into the horizon, again according to Comic Buyer's Guide. Motown Comics, you guessed it, a new division of Motown Entertainment, they have hired Milestone Comics, formed head Michael Davis, to get the project underway. We'll keep you informed of these and other startups closings as we get them in. The 1994 Gummy, not bears, the 1994 Gummy Awards have been announced by Non-Sport Update Magazine. The winners are chosen by the readers of the magazine. The awards will appear in the February-March issue coming out January 15th. The best major division manufacturer award went to Skybox. The best medium division went to Comics Images. The best manufacturer first year division went to Wizards of the Coast. Best set is Mars Attacks from, Com from Topps Comics. Most creative set is Superman Man of Steel Platinum from Skybox. The best packaging award went to Mars Attacks Display Box by Topps. The best value added insert was Marvel Masterpieces 94 Gold Foil Stamped Signature Card by Fleer. Best Chase Cards, Batman Saga of the Dark Knight, Sky Disc by Skybox. Best Non-Sport Update Cover was Superman, Man of Steel, painted by Donato Giancola. And lastly is the best Non-Sport Artist, the brothers Greg and Tim Hildebrandt. Congratulations to all the winners. On a side note, Comics TV is a planning ist first award ceremony scheduled to air in early to mid-March so stay tuned for that exciting event and gummies away <laughs> and finally this week in the news more information has been pouring in regarding the purchase by Marvel Entertainment of the Heroes World distribution company According to an unconfirmed report on the internet, Marvel will be pulling out of the direct market as we stated could happen last week. Affected with the May 95 cover date, Comics Marvel will begin handling all their own distribution. Capital City Distribution Incorporated, one of the two largest comic distributors, told Comics Buyer's Guide, we don't believe it would be in any publisher's interest at this time to attempt to distribute comics without distributing through capital. Does that sound a little cocky to you? Or is that man hoping Marvel won't really do this? If Marvel does proceed with this plan, at least one third of the business the distributors receive will go and be gone, probably never to return. Additionally, 
Marvel contends it still plans on creating a chain of comic book stores. Stay tuned for this and more interesting industry information here every week. And that's it for Comics News This Week. My first book this week is Filthy Habits number three from Aeon Comics. It's the first time I'm doing an Aeon book. Landry Quinn Walker is the writer, Eric Jones the penciler, and Rustin A. Craid does the inks. This book sort of epitomizes Generation X, the 1990s, or a little bit of both. The story was a little stale in the beginning. The art reminds me of Roberta Gregory's Naughty Bits book, which is a good book in itself. The story picks up several pages in, and I was laughing out loud by the end. It's actually a pretty good book. It's about a loose group of friends who kind of don't really like each other. They, it's, it's kind of like your typical group of friends where the guys and the girls, they, some of them date together and then you know they break up and they don't seem to get along. It's all that kind of stuff. You know, you're sex driven, bunch of guys, you're offended, girls, there's some peace and love thrown in. The main character, Dylan, gets his butt kicked once by one of his male friends, once by one of his female friends. The reproduction of the artwork leaves much to be desired. It's not that good. There's plenty of action through the book though, uh, but there's also a lot of profanity and there is nudity making this an adult only book. Uh, eight cents a page on the price, in in price index for this $2.95 book. So it's not a bad book. Next today, Agent 3-0, number one of four from Galaxy Novels. It's written by John Christopher with art by many people, $2.95. Galaxy novels are just that, they're novels with full page artwork every other page or so. The story is about Admiral Rigoletti and his daughter Irma, very nice name, who are kidnapped. A rescue attempt is made by Agent 3-0 and the events that take place encapsulates the entire story. The artwork is very nice. Uh, including Stephen Platt, Ron Lim, and Mark Poole, among others. My main problem is that this isn't really a comic book. Sure, it's the same size and the same shape, but it's not a comic book. They're trying to reach a different audience, although I believe they're actually tr they're trying to reach the same audience, but I don't think they're going to be able to. When I read a comic book, what I want is I want to be able to sit down and within 20 minutes I want to be done reading the comic book. This is not something you can sit down and read. It's more like a book. On the other hand, but this might be a good in-between point to get kids to read books because there's a lot of, it's more of a text, but there's still artwork in it. So it's something that for that reason alone, I would recommend it. If you're trying to read this from a comic book standpoint, it's not worth it. If you're collecting artwork by some of these people, that might be another reason why you do this. Otherwise, <laughs> pass on this one. And my last book today is another of these 90s type comics. Slacker Comics number one is from Slave Labor Graphics. Doug Slack is the creative force behind this book. This book may be the epitome of Generation X comics. Grunge, Seattle, punks, anarchy, everything about the 90s is in here. There's a decent collection of short stories including where were you when Kurt died? The final word on Kurt Cobain's suicide. High school girls and other assorted teen stuff can be found in these pages. Now, if you're looking for a laugh, you may get one here. It's definitely not for the sophisticated superhero reading population. It's very simple with sketchy art throughout the entire book. The overall pace is fast enough. On the price index, this book runs high though at 12 cents per page. If the number of readers Readers is narrowed down to just the punk type, the 90s grunge, everything kind of person, then maybe it might be worth it. But it's gonna it's gonna make it a little too expensive because this book is at 295. It's a little too much, so it's not very good as an overall pick. I would not recommend this one, although it was kind of cute. That's it for the independent books this week. Tell you something, Clay. What is it, Morg? 
I'm better than you. I've always been better. <laughs> I can beat you, Clay. Now, you hit it. And you better hit it fast. I won, Clay. I won. This is Dual Review. Each and every week, me and Michael bring you a book. We both read it, we review it, and we tell you what you think about it. How can we tell them what they think about it? What we think about okay. it. Okay. Okay. Now, we've got Mortal Coil. It's the Ashcan edition from Mermaid Productions. Troy Zarell is the writer, Keith Davis the artist, and Tom Luth does the inks. Mermaid Pro Produ Publications of Vancouver, <laughs> Canada, ran a contest to find out who are the best creative talents that they could find. This is one of the first creations from that group. They are all unknowns except for Tom Luth, who does work on Gru the Wanderer. He did the uh, coloring on the issue Steve did yes. a little while ago. And he's been working with Gru since 1983. Mermaid plans on releasing a total of 12 monthly titles over the next three years. If they last that long, it's a very, very big project they're looking to pull off. A lot of ups and downs in that. Set in the year 2110, Mortal Coil involves a superhero team, which... Uh, Another superhero team. Which most new books come out, they have superhero teams. There are some interesting concepts in this book, like the futuristic football game, <laughs> which is pretty cool. Yeah, they're throwing around a football with spikes on it. And you the, don't live when the, you're running the ball. The players almost look like him with exactly. their spikes on them and stuff. Spikes and... Uh, Oops, he's on the floor. A big horn on the one guy, he impales a guy. And the, the art is similar to the Ultraverse or Image titles. It's got a lot of that. There's a lot of spit, there's muscles. Uh, the women have uh, very big arms and it's good it's short skirts yeah it's overall though the book i in my opinion is not bad um something that most independent books lack is decent artwork and this one does have decent artwork it's not a bad book their universe will be lo worth looking at and this book comes out um, sometime either this month or next month i agree the uh artwork wasn't that bad but on the story part of it it just seems there's too many stories about superhero teams that are trying to be killed by assassins. Here's this assassin, and, and he gets shot and blows up. Again and again. That's all you see in these books. Blah, 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 this, blah, blah. This, this is like a, a copy of an image title, like Michael said, the way it was drawn and, and the storyline of that. Um, it's not a bad book, but I'll tell you what, if I'm going to go and spend money on a book, I'm going to go buy an actual image title. I'm not going to buy something that's black and white, even though the artwork is somewhat good. Um, I wouldn't recommend buying this book. I'm sorry, but that's just my, my choice, my personal choice. Yeah. But uh, We don't know what the actual cost is. No. I'm, I'm going to guess it's going to be $2.95 or and somewhere in that area. For an ash can, I'd say this is like pretty big because normal ash can books are a lot smaller. Uh, that, that's a but good, good there, point. There's different... Uh, different there's I I for and I another short story in there impulse another short story go go boy go go boy the first homosexual superhero uh, superhero we will be doing go go, go boy in a few weeks Michael will be imitating <laughs> go go boy <laughs> so anyways this I, I sort of disagree with Steve because the book isn't that bad and Yes, they might be kind of like image wannabes, but the story's a little different because it's set in the future, which none of the image titles are really set in the future like that. And they've got a couple good concepts, so it might be worth checking out for an issue or two. Not. So this week, as we haven't said in a while, I disagree. I don't like the book, and I would save my money spending on something that I like. And I'm not going to say that I 100% agree, but I say it's worth taking a look at before you purchase it. And that's it for Dual Review this week. Now, I've got a little oh. commentary <laughs> for all you people out there. Anyone watching there. right now knows about the extreme popularity of Pogs, or the milk bottle caps, as you may know. These little things. Does anybody remember seeing Pogs over a year ago? We do, because we've been around, we've seen Pogs. Pogs I showed them on the show, and Spawn Pogs. 
they were not popular. Sprogs, though. They're called Sprogs with exactly. Spawn. Superman had the Pogs. And they were not popular at all. Apparently, only in Hawaii were they popular, and they stayed popular. And finally, it crossed the Pacific, and it landed in California, and boom, California, everything blows up. It's like cards. Well, after a lot of pushing, Pogs are popular around the country. All I've got to say is be careful. Don't go spending all of your money on a couple valuable Pogs, because in six months or less, I personally believe that Pogs will be dead. Oh, my God. So they will be worth virtually nothing. I don't think they're going to be worth anything. Plus, uh, let me throw in a little comment on Pogs. They sell for roughly around a dollar ninety-nine a pack. Some more expensive. I have not seen any cheaper when we go to shows and look at them. Now you get four to six pogs in a pack for that price. They're this big. They're like the size of a half dollar, maybe well, a little bigger. What we've got here are yeah. these new pogs coming out from uh, Lisa Simpson Skybox. Yeah, coming Bongo out. Comics. Homer and, and Lisa, but. Why spend a dollar ninety nine on six little round things that your mother's gonna end up throwing away when they're on the floor anyways? Buy a pack of cards if you're gonna buy something. Buy cards or collect that or off. buy comic books. Better off. Save it for that. Exactly. I, I agree with Michael hundred percent. I do not think pogs are gonna be around very long. But hey, that's up to you, but we're warning you ahead of time. Don't buy them. Right. And whatever you do. Do not waste your $6.95 on the new Pog magazine. I saw issue number one, and <laughs> it wasn't open. It was a poly bag, but $6.95 is outrageous. I don't pay $6.95 for magazines, no matter oh, what it, kind it Wizard is. Wizard is only $3.95, and look at everything it gives you in there. It gives this you stories, interviews, pictures, price guide. <clears throat> Pogs, all it is is Pogs. Nothing but. And this is the biggest ripoff I've seen yet of 1995. Now yeah, this 94. is just an, another friendly tip from your friends here at Comics TV. Yeah, take it to heart. <laughs> real quick this week, I, I didn't get around to doing it in my mainstream review. I got a couple real quick books to show you. Street Fighter, issue number one of two from DC Comics. Issue number one or two. Um, I picked this up. It was three ninety five. dollars If you're going to follow the movie, and of course kids will follow the Street Fighter stuff, uh, it's a little bit pricey. You get about 60 pages, anywhere from 50 to 60 pages, but only 41 of them are, are, are comic. And uh, you get also with that, you get cute little tattoos and a Jean-Claude Van Damme trading card. Ooh, got to get one of them. So uh, maybe pick that up. And Something that I didn't get a chance to review because it was out when I went the first time. The Death of Professor Xavier. I read it. I liked it. Um, it leads right into X-Men Alpha. Really, really try to pick this one up. If you can find it anywhere, pick it up. Um, it sells out very, very quick. Uh, our sponsor, who you see at the end of the show, has he just ordered quite a few copies, so get in there and try and get one. But Pick it up. It was a good reading book, and you got to have it for your collection. And next this week, we have one of our interesting, wonderful comic book re reviews. Interview. <laughs> <laughs> All of our reviews are wonderful, but this is an interview. And interesting. With Mike Barron of Nexus fame. We spoke with Mike up in Toronto, so let's go take a look. How did you get your start in comics? I was working at an insurance company and I got a phone call from an editor at a newspaper who thought I could draw. And he said, there's this guy down here trying to sell us his art, and he draws just like you. And that was Steve Rude. <laughs> now, obviously, the editor didn't know anything about art. but <laughs> So I met Steve, and we started working together. And, and on the basis of his art, we got Nexus published by Capital. Oh. What type of comic-related training did you have? <laughs> Well, I'd been a child, of course, <laughs> and I'd read a lot of comics, and I lived in my head and imagined a great deal. I don't really think that when it comes to writing that there's such a thing as training. I mean, you can't teach how to write. You can give exercises to help somebody give form to their stories, but I really kind of worked it up on my own. What happened was I wanted to be an artist, and I started to draw. And I drew like crazy for five years. I got the Loomis books and the Hogarth books. And because I wanted to do comics, instead of just sketching and learning my ABCs, I, I drew my own comics, which were 
terribly written, or no, no, they were, they were brilliantly written, excuse me, but terribly drawn. And uh, I suppose I kind of trained myself. Hmm. Uh, who are your influences? <laughs> I absorb pop culture like a sponge, but there's only two influences that I acknowledge. Carl Barks and Philip Jose Farmer. Okay. Um, what projects are you currently working on right now? I'm working on two Nexus series for Dark Horse. One is debuting in February. Nexus crosses over into comics greatest world and goes after the man from the vortex who it turns out is a mass murderer. In March, the new series that Steve Rude and I have been working on for over a year will debut. We have three issues in the can. I will be writing King Tiger for Dark Horse. And I have a book coming out from Marvel in the spring called Blockbuster, which is part of their Marvel Select series. Um, what do you think about the current state of industry? Is it better or worse uh, now compared to 10 years ago? You know, we're going through this roller coaster ride right now, and we just kind of hit bottom. As far as it, everything is better in the sense that there's always social progress, and for this it means I get a better break as a creator. But right now there's a lot of talented people out there looking for work just because there's the market has shrank and, and, and people are not buying the books they used to. We're, we're in a serious situation right now, but I'm sure we'll get out of it. Can someone earn a decent living in the comic book industry? Yes. In fact, the big change that I've noticed in the past 10 years is that comics have grown up to join the other entertainment uh, milieus like film and, and publishing. And you can tell this that hardly a week goes by where you don't hear comics-related news reported on CNN or in USA Today. They're just accepted as another form of publishing now. And thanks, Mike. Good talking to you, and we'll see you again. Yes. Now, next we got a little tidbit, Gunfighters in Hell. We reviewed this as a dual review about uh, two to th probably about three, three months, months back. And we just got the new issue. This is issue number four of five. Not for youngins. <laughs> and on the back, we have a nice little quote from Mike and Steve from Comics TV. TV. We made our first comic book. As it We're says, there. it was quote from our um, review there. An excellent book. The art is phenomenal. So much minute detail, you have to read it two or three times to catch little things you didn't see before. Yes. <gasps> Makes me want to cry. <laughs> We're pros. <laughs> so, we just thought we'd share that with you. Thanks, Rebel Studios, for, for boosting us. We appreciate it. And as I say each and every week, when you patronize your local comic shop and buy a book. Talking over and over. <laughs> and buy a book, read it. Well, this is standard procedure. Read it. They're learning tools. They're printed for your enjoyment. Take care of them. And as we say each and every week on Comics TV, when you patronize your local shop, tell them you've seen it on Comics TV. Ta ta. See ya. Bye. Comics TV.